S23 Ultra astrophotography. Can it do it? You bet. Let's have a look. With this phone, you've got two, possibly even three options to shoot the stars in the night sky. Option number one is your night mode. It's going to do a reasonably good job. It's going to be handheld but it's going to be so much better if you use something else. Option two is using the manual mode and setting the camera up to say 20 to 30 seconds in the pro mode and shooting the ISO relative to what the light, ambient light uh, pollution is in that location that you're doing it in. But let's be realistic, if you're someone who's shot, trying to shoot the night sky or you're keen to shoot the night sky with any sort of phone, with this you've got the expert raw, astro mode, and it's just bloody awesome. There are some limitations though with the expert raw. It's not all beer and Skittles. It doesn't do everything you want it to do. Let's go and show you how to take a good photo like this with this. You're going to need some equipment to do this sort of photo. You're gonna need a tripod and you're going to need a phone holder. I'm using the Explorer Pro Video tripod here. I'll link it down the bottom if you're interested and the same with the phone holder. The uh, phone will sit in the top just here. Unscrew that. You want to use this because these photos are going to take a minimum of four minutes. A minimum of four minutes which is great, and I'll explain how that works in a minute, but it also has a downside. Once that's set up there, next thing you're going to need is a clear night sky, where I am here is a Bortle One location. So this is really going to push this phone. The next thing you're going to need is a flashlight or a torch, and you're going to need this to compose the photo. Now you can take photos of the night sky and just get some stars, and that's great. That's what astrophotography is, like shooting the night sky, any object in the night sky. But what I'm doing here is looking for that galactic core, that, ga that gaseous cloud, that orange gaseous cloud. And the way you find that is I use photo pills. There's a few different tools around. I've done lots of tutorials. I'll link one at the top here, where it is, about how to use you know, plan for this sort of photo. The reason I'm using a torch is to compose the photo. What I'll do first is just put it into night mode. It's in night mode there, and I'm going to use the torch now to light up the foreground. I've got some grass in the foreground here, some really tall grass, and that's what I want to be in the foreground. Just loosen that tripod off, and I'll move that around so it's, it's not quite the bottom third, but it's probably about the bottom quarter, if you like, and it's good about there. Now, a lot of this is not going to be in this photo, but it is going to be a silhouette in the photo. And now I just take a photo. Once this photo's taken, I know my composition's gonna be pretty good. It's going to have some of the stars in the night sky, but not all of them. I'll have a look at that photo. All the light that's there is coming from the video light, and that's, that's fine. This photo is not a photo that I wanna keep. I'm just using it for the composition. But you can see in the sky, the galactic core's coming down from the top right down to the bottom left, and that's what I want. Now I'll go into expert raw. From night mode now, just hit the back arrow at the top there. <clears throat> Go to more, and up the top left hand corner, you're going to have expert raw. If your phone is brand spanking new, you're going to need to download this from the Samsung store. Not the Play Store, not the Google Play Store, the Samsung store. So there's expert raw. This here just works like a regular camera. But on the left hand side, you've got this little line with some stars on it. You want to hit that, and it's going to give you the option here of four minutes, seven minutes, or 10 minutes moving across the screen here. The next thing that you see there is that sky guide. You can show that. I'll just hit show. I will hit, there you go. It's going to show you some of the constellations that are in the sky. I'm not really interested in that at the moment, but it is going to be helpful for you if you're trying to capture a particular constellation in the sky. I'm just going to turn that off again because I know what I'm looking at. I know already the galactic core is there. You saw it in that photo that I used just a second ago to test it. That's it. We don't need to do anything else here. You can go and adjust the focusing if you want, and I have. I've got it on 0.7. I have found on this phone here, point this phone, and I've read different things, and I don't know if this is, I don't know, just a quirky thing with Samsung or not. I don't know. I, I remember on the S21, we were shooting at uh, infinity focus, then I think the 22, or after a software update, it come back to like 0.9. I think on the 22, I had it at 0.8. This one seems to be at 0.7. I've got the pin sharp stars right there. So anyway, I'm going to turn this light off, hit the shutter button, and get going. There it goes there now. Four minutes it's going to take this photo for. Four minutes. While that's taking that photo, um, some of the downsides of using this particular app, the, the upsides are, are, are obvious that 
the photos are just amazing. It's taking a series, I think it's 20 second long frames and it's blending them together, stacking them to get rid of that digital noise, just like what the Pixel does with its astro mode, which is probably, in my opinion, especially in light polluted areas, that the Pixel is probably the best phone on the market to do this sort of thing. Um, but the downside of this, similarly to the Pixel, it's really hard to light paint. Now I've done lots of light painting with this mode already to test it using the strobe that I've used in other videos, which I think is probably the best light painting tool that you can have to paint those foreground subjects. And none of it's worked. I haven't had it working successfully in any sort of attempt. I've even tried continuous lighting and that worked, like this photo here worked. And that's with this video light that I'm using right now turned down to its lowest setting and it was on for the entire four minutes. And it worked and it picked up that foreground grass, if you like. But this is going to be a silhouette photo, the one we're taking right now. Um, the downside of that, again, is that you've got to have a light on continuously. So if anything moves in that frame, it's going to be blurry in the photo and we don't want that. So on a windy night, even right now, it's a very slight breeze. I've got some poplar trees over there that I took some photos of before and you don't want a continuous light on them because it'll just ruin the photo. So I tried strobing it multiple times through that four minutes, probably eight or nine times through that four minutes, and it just didn't work. That's a, that's a significant downside. But this is going to be probably unbeatable, I think, in those silhouette sort of photos. The other downside, of course, is that it takes four minutes. <laughs> you can use the pro mode uh, on this phone, and it does a pretty good job. You can even shoot raw in that pro mode. Um, with the settings that I gave you before, and it works really, really well. But this here, I think, works better. It's probably going to pick up a little bit of the lighting because I've got this, this video light on, and I can see some ambient light in front of the phone. So it might pick this up. It might actually work quite well with this ambient light because the grass is a bit stiffer, if you like. It's not moving too much. If you are new here, I do two videos each and every week all about small sense of photography. Uh, especially in low light, that's kind of what I'm known for here. So if you're in that sort of thing and you've got a phone, you want to know how to do it, subscribe to the channel and you'll see videos each and every week. This thing will be finished in a second. Hopefully uh, it looks pretty good. All right, boys and girls, <laughs> that's bloody amazing. I love it when, when I do something and it's not quite the way I want it to work, but the results are still just awesome. So the video light did pick this up and you can see there some of those uh, the, the plants in the foreground, those that bits of grass that's picked it up pretty well. What I didn't know though, is that from the town, well, my hometown, which is about four Ks, five Ks over that way, there's a bit of a glow on the horizon. That's added everything to this. This is a sensational photo. I'm going to do it again and actually use this video light constantly with a better position and light up that foreground a bit better. This is a good result. It's gonna take one more photo, then we'll look at editing. Well, all right, I'm glad I did that because that's a ripper photo. The other downside about shooting with Expert RAW is that it's going to give you a RAW file, so we need to edit this. So I'll get these now, I'll take them back inside, put them on the Mac, and we'll edit up these photos and see how good we are. But I reckon, just by looking at the back of this, this is a sensational camera for doing this sort of thing, and it's a great app for doing this sort of thing as well. Anyway, let's go inside. How good is that photo? Absolutely amazing what you can get out of this thing in Expert RAW. I've loaded up some photos here into Adobe Lightroom on the computer now. This is the editing program that I use. You don't have to use this. I have found this to be the best program for doing this sort of thing. Um, you might use Darkroom. I would say that Snapseed probably isn't the go-to for doing this sort of photo. Um, if you want these photos, the ones that I've taken here, and the, so I'll give you the before and the after photo, head over to shamemosson.com. There'll be a link there to download these photos and you can have a play with this yourself. So this is the last photo, the foreground's lit up, the galactic core's there rising, there's a bit of glow on the horizon, and let's edit this photo. So you could just go ahead and hit auto, and it's gonna blow all the highlights out. That's what it does with uh, Astro Photo, so you don't wanna be doing that. It's gonna reset that. Now, I'm looking at two elements here. I'm looking at the galactic core, and I'm looking at the foreground. The foreground immediately is too bright. I need to bring that down a little bit. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is add a mask. Unusual, straight away, adding a mask. Um, so I'm going to add a, a, a linear gradient mask, bring it up from the bottom, about there, spread it a little bit more and drop it down. And I'm just going to decrease the whites on this and see how that, already that looks a much better. Um, so I had 1% <coughs> on that little LED panel. Uh, that's the lowest it can go, but it was still a little bit too bright for that entire duration. So what I'm looking for here is the foreground element and the sky element to be matching in brightness, if you like. 
So that'll do as far as that goes. <clears throat> the sky itself is not too bad. There's a little bit of noise when I zoom in there. There's a bit of noise there, so we'll get, we'll get rid of that. We'll head down to the luminosity panel, increase the noise, uh, illuminance, and increase the contrast slightly. I'm gonna head back, we'll go back to that sharpening, and I'm gonna increase the sharpening, hold option, and bring the masking in, and put a lot in the masking. I wanna mask out the front and the main stars. That'll do. That looks pretty good. Um, now, when I look at this thing overall, if you wanted to do that masking, by the way, on your phone, if you were doing this on your phone, I'm doing it on here so it's just a bigger picture, you can see it better. Um, but as you start moving that slider for the mask, hold the photo and move it, it'll do the same thing. <clears throat> now, up the top here, I look at this now and evaluate this and I go, it's a little bit green, it's a little bit cool, and I need more contrast. There's a bit of haze there, but oddly enough, on this phone, in this app, the dehazing slider doesn't do much at all besides in the core, let me show you. Uh, on, other, on other phones, it does it quite well, but if you look at that, all it's really doing is the core. I'll slide it all the way back and you can see the only point that it's going to adjust that haze. Um, I'm going to bring it up anyway because it did some elements to the core. But let's bring down that green by adjusting the tint. Not too far, that's probably too far. That's good. Make it a little bit cooler. Not a lot. That's good as well. I'll decrease the blacks. That's pretty good. I really do like that. What I'm going to do now is add another mask. So I go up the top here to the mask, um, hit the plus, same thing on a mobile phone, and I'm going to add a radial gradient. So I'm going to bring this radial up, turn it so it's in line with the core, shrink it down a little bit. Basically what I'm doing here is masking that gaseous cloud. Once I'm there, I'm going to increase the clarity, and that should give us a fair bit of a pop. It's brought out some whites in this. This is an unusual phone to edit. I'm going to decrease the whites. And I might make it a little bit warmer. Not too much, just a little bit. That's it. I think that looks pretty bloody good. I'll hit done down the bottom, and I'll export this. This photo here, edited like this, I'll throw it over onto shamemoston.com, and you can download it yourself. Did you know about our other channel? We've got a second channel all about what we do here on the farm, how we make money on the farm, and what life is like in regional Victoria in Outback Australia. It's Windella Farm, I'll link it down the bottom, and that's it for today, guys. Catch you later.